just wanted to give a quick background. So 26 years in IT, 24 in project management. Um, as Susan said, I run a very large PMO right now at Microsoft. We're rolling out dynamics around the world. Um, I've written three books, my Project Management Communication Bible, Tactical Guide for Building a PMO, and then the Project Management Communication Tools will be out this June. And like I said, two of those um, with the familiar covers there uh, were actually self-published. So lots of experience, lots of background in project management, very passionate about it. I've taught all, you know, in, in Ontario, taught in British Columbia, and also uh, here in America. So very excited to be here today, so let's jump into it. We've got three topics today, understanding project communications and why projects fail, uh, introduction to project communication planning, and then we'll go over some top communication tools. So we've got great content here, and let's go. So the top reasons projects fail. So the only way to solve project problems is by communicating. The only way to solve project problems is by communicating. Think about that statement for a sec. You've got a problem with your budget, You've got a problem with your resource. How are you going to solve that? You're going to communicate. In every case, communications is going to be the method you use. Make sense? There's really no other way. So I want to show you a survey that PMI did a couple of years back in their PM net. And it said 28% of projects fail due to poor communications. 72% were other reasons, but 28% um, were failing due to poor communications. That's a huge number. That's roughly one out of four projects are failing due to poor communications. A survey back in 2012 uh, from projectmanagement.com, it uh, was called the top 10 reasons for our projects fail. And again, number three reason was poor communications. So we're going to see some surveys coming up, but more and more surveys and more and more projects are failing, and communications is in that either one or two uh, spaces. So it's a common problem um, that we're seeing across projects, and it happens, continues to happen today. So we're going to walk through that. So let's look at that survey. So it, it was called the top nine causes for project failure. It was a couple of years back, um, but again, it says poor communications, 28%, insignificant resource planning, and I'll give you a minute to look at those. requirements, unrealistic budgets seem familiar? They, sure, they certainly should be. What I want to do now is I'd like to challenge those numbers. I'd like to actually um, for you to put your communication cap on and look at these from a pure communication perspective. I have communication numbers a lot higher. Take an example. Let's look at poor project requirements. If I decide to collect my requirements over email and only over email, do you think that would be a problem? It would be a huge problem. I actually had that scenario happen to me a couple of years back. We were running a large project. I had a contractor working for me, and all that contractor would do was collect my requirements over email. Wouldn't come to my office, wouldn't write on the whiteboard. Had a couple conversations, but generally over the phone, but generally would not document um, anything in person. Had to do it over email. The project was a huge failure. We had, to re, re, we had to redo the project and re redo everything, get a new analyst in. But they literally did that. They literally collected requirements over email. So when you look at poor project requirements, you look at unrealistic budgets, and you look at every one of these things, there's certainly a slice of communications. Now, when they did the original survey, they clearly weren't thinking from a pure communication perspective. But actually, I think if you look at these, communications is a major part of that. Unrealistic schedules, how did you communicate that? How did you communicate how much budget you needed for number seven unrealistic budgets? And when you go over and over and over, you'll see communications plays a big role in that. So in that poor project requirements, 9.8%, I'd actually take a percentage of that and I'd throw that up to uh, poor communications. So it would be maybe 28, 29, maybe 30%. And I'd take a slice of that across the board. And when I did that, I strongly believe that 85% of projects fail due to poor communications. Like I said, I've done this for many, many years, and I see constant trends on how project managers just don't value communications, and therefore we see failures. And we see failures across all those nine areas. Make sense? Good. Let's jump into a couple more surveys. Now, you may not see the word communications, but you'll certainly see that uh, communications are all over this. Center of Project Management Study, done a couple years back, not monitoring vital signs. Communications. 
Uh, Penn State University, poorly communicated deliverables and goals. University of Carl's wrote, uncontrolled soft factors. We all know soft factors are really around communications and that relationship building and how are we communicating. So again, survey after survey. So as we clearly look at just these four surveys alone, communications is a common problem and why projects fail. You can go search the internet yourself. There's a ton of surveys out there, and you'll see communications is always on the top. Think about a project manager's job. 95 or 90 percent, sorry, of a project manager's role is communication. So what are they doing? They have to be communicating on a regular basis for them to be successful. I can't stress enough of that. It's just so important. And then as a project manager or as a PMO manager, whatever functional manager, you have to stress communications as a priority. And you have to ensure that communications occur throughout the life of the project. Great. That. I think we're going to hold questions to the end. But let's jump into communication planning. One of the key factors I find from a communication planning perspective and from a communication perspective is planning. I'm finding more and more project managers are just not spending that time planning. And so let's look at some of the things they can do to help us from a planning perspective. Think about communication planning. You're really answering five critical questions. Who, what, where, when, and how. Who are you going to send the information to? What information are you going to send? Where are you going to send it? When are you going to send it? And how are you going to send it? Answering these five questions will give you a huge advantage in developing a solid communication plan. Concepts that we want to cover from a communication perspective that we want you to take forward um, as you think about communicating on your projects. Communication plan is going to be one of the most important aspects of managing your project. It's really as important as any other area. When you plan your schedule, you plan your budget, plan your resources, plan your communications as well. Spend that time up front and plan your communications. That's going to help you down the line. Understand what you want to communicate and how to communicate at the beginning of the project. You're not going to have time to go back. You're going to have resource issues, um, CRs, um, scope changes. You're going to have all the managing of the projects, and you're certainly not going to be able to stop the project and say, hey, stop, we've got to do a newsletter. Hey, stop, we've got to do a status report. It's not going to happen. So if you don't plan that communications and how you want to communicate at the beginning of the project, it's never going to happen um, throughout the life of the project. You just have to do it early. You also want to ask your customer how they want their information delivered as well. And you'll verify that and continue to verify that throughout the life of the project. You think about an 18-month or a 36-month or a 24-month project, whatever the case may be, communications will radically change throughout the life of that project. So think about when a project goes to red, what do you do? When a project goes to yellow, what do you do? You want to document all those communications early. You want to document those in your communication plan. And therefore, when you're actually executing and that event occurs, you know exactly what to do. So many project managers actually are more reactionary when it comes to um, what happens when you go to red or yellow. And I strongly suggest you put that in your communication plan before the event ever happens, and therefore you'll be able to walk through that and uh, be able to react accordingly. So very, very important. The key point really here, every project requires a communication plan. And you'd be surprised at how many projects actually miss that, and it's really, really important you get that locked down. A lot of people think a status report is a communication plan. It's really not. And so really, really important, the key um, concepts to really think about communication planning. What we do now is offer you some tools. And so when we talk about the who, what, where, why, and how, we want to figure out and really use some tools and insert those tools into our communication plan. The first is the circle of communications chart. That's actually going to give you the who. Uh, the second, a communication requirements matrix. That will give you the who and the what. The role report matrix will give you a who, what, when. 